Welcome to the Cloud Count Integration and Web API Expert Breakout Sessions. This is the session for SnapLogic, and we have with us Darren Cunningham, Vice President. Darren, welcome to Cloud Count Integration. Thank you, Vance. Darren leads the SnapLogic Enterprise Class Cloud Connectivity Initiative. This is part of his role at SnapLogic. He focuses on SaaS integration platform as a service data and process integration capabilities of SnapLogic. And he brings a terrific portfolio of both integration and cloud integration techniques and expertise to his current post. He's worked at Informatica, Salesforce.com, Business Objects, and Lucidera, a SaaS-based provider. In his session this morning, SnapLogic Elastic Integration, Darren will tell us about the improvements that SnapLogic is helping drive in the whole space of cloud integration to provide both easy, code-free implementation as well as visibility and end-to-end -end management. If you haven't already done so, just a quick reminder, you can download Darren's slides right now. Just click the link under the viewing area. You'll also see in that same place that Darren and his team have brought us some terrific white papers and other valuable downloads. And where we can, we want to make this interactive. So to connect with Darren, just type into the submit a question box. And now, Darren, let me hand it over to you so you can tell us about SnapLogic Elastic Integration. Thanks, Vance. Thanks for the opportunity to speak today and really excited about our discussion and the opportunity to take you through an introduction to SnapLogic and some of the challenges we're seeing in the market and how we're helping our customers address those challenges. So in today's discussion, what I thought I'd start with is just summarizing some of the reasons that we're seeing integration platform as a service become such a hot topic within enterprise IT organizations. I'm going to introduce you to the SnapLogic Elastic Integration Platform and share a really interesting customer case study. Our, our customer iRobot, who many of you know for the Roomba and some uh, consumer robots that they provide, is really doing some very interesting, innovative things with SnapLogic, powering some of their growth and overall innovation as a company. So with that, I thought I'd start with when we go out and talk to customers and large IT organizations, whether it's a CIO or head of applications, there's kind of two common questions that we end up discussing, particularly if there's been a new IT organization, a new regime that's come in to really drive change. Uh, the first is this concept of cloudification. You're all thinking about in your organizations which apps are going to move to the cloud and when. You probably are already have Salesforce.com in-house for CRM. You're probably thinking about Workday for human resources. You're looking at ITSM systems like ServiceNow, maybe thinking about analytics, data warehousing, you know, Amazon Redshift, maybe even ERP. So there's this concept of cloudification of you know what's moving to the cloud and when. The next conversation then sort of leads to, and these are definitely related, is where is the data going to reside over time? Where's the center of gravity? Where, what is our data gravity going to look like? As more and more of our data does reside in the cloud, do you want to do things like analytics and integration in the cloud as well, or would you prefer to have that running behind the firewall, uh, maybe you're more of a, a private cloud kind of mindset in your organization? So these are two uh, hot questions that we love kind of talking about with customers and digging into, and every company is at a different phase or stage of maturity on their answers. But what is consistent, no matter what size company, but it's, it's certainly very consistent in the larger organizations, is there is a new set of integration challenges that we're all dealing with. There's big data access and analytics. There's this challenge of disconnected SaaS silos, connecting both your SaaS apps to each other and to on-premises systems. There's an API proliferation growing every day. More and more APIs are coming into the enterprise. There's this sort of looming question, especially for manufacturing organizations, around the Internet of Things. And what is that going to mean for data volumes, for really all aspects of data management? So we recently ran a survey when we, when we really wanted to ask our customers, you know, companies over 100 employees uh, or, 100, or 500 million in revenue in North America, we wanted to dig into a few areas to just validate some of the assumptions we had made as a company. The first question we asked is, you know, what are the business drivers for cloud integration and for a cloud integration platform? And it really, you know, while the challenges I just described were all very much apparent, it was really this need for speed that was a key driver for a new modern approach to an old problem, really. How to get more value to the business, how to tackle the integration requirements, and ultimately deploy these apps faster, and sure, we're driving innovation into the business. And what we find is when we go and talk to all sort of sides of IT organizations today is that they're faced with what we have sort of 
kind of rift on Clay Christensen's Innovator's Dilemma book by calling it the Integrator's Dilemma. In fact, I was just meeting with a very large tech company's architecture team this morning, and they were playing this back to us in real time. We have a dilemma. We've got multiple teams who believe that integration has to be solved a certain way. We've got TIBCO, Web Methods, and a whole laundry list of application integration, as well as a bunch of open source technologies in there for handling messages. Lots of questions and conversations about the ESB and you know, what is the role of the enterprise service bus in this new architecture. We know what it was in the old world. What's its relevance in the new world? Similarly, on the data side, there's the analytics team, the data warehousing group, the group responsible for traditional ETL. More batch-oriented mindset, struggling with real time, and really now grappling with what are we going to do around Hadoop What's the role of SQL relative to Hadoop investments? So a very interesting time in the industry with a lot of new innovation around integration, which is exciting. I saw a tweet actually from last week's Hortonworks conference, uh, which was the Hadoop Summit, and it was from uh, you know someone who's been in this industry for years, which is Ralph Kimball, and the tweet was you know that he was going to retire until all of this change that uh, has, has come online, you know, has come about thanks to Hadoop and what's happening in the world of big data. So Gartner, Forrester, Ovum, all the industry analyst firms are now centering around this concept of integration platform as a service, or IPaaS. And what we consistently are talking to customers about is sort of the legacy versus what we're calling the elastic integration needs, sort of the rows and columns mindset versus any type, any unstructured and structured data type that needs to be integrated. The batch or real time versus any time. Machine scale versus any scale. You know, integration that once ran only behind the firewall to now integration that can run anywhere, depending on where that uh, data gravity is in your company. And then ultimately client server versus any device, with mobility being you know, such a huge driver of data volumes and really innovation in the enterprise. Then we started to look at just bringing it back to the survey data that we found from working with Tech Validate, which is a research firm, and we asked, well, what are the main challenges of traditional on-prem technologies for integration, for cloud integration? And the answers are fairly self-evident. Requires costly hardware purchases and software installation and configuration. Too expensive due to perpetual licensing pricing uh, model. And then ultimately a lot of pain around change management, where endpoint changes mean integration rework. So then we countered that with, well, again, back to we talked about speed being such an important driver for cloud integration or IPaaS adoption. What are the technical requirements of a cloud integration platform? And we were happy to see that modern scalable architecture is way out in front, followed by this ability to handle more of the modern web standards, JSON and REST. We've seen a lot of investment over the years in technologies that are well-suited for SOAP and XML, but the new languages of JSON, REST, and of course the proliferation of APIs requires something a little different, a little more modern, as well as ease of use for less technical users. So just before I introduce SnapLogic, I think it's also important to highlight that some of the early technologies that have come to market to try to really address some of these new requirements, these new sort of elastic enterprise requirements, have been fairly point-to-point -point oriented. They've been simple wizards, following through easy steps, trying to deliver self-service to the SaaS application owners, say it's the Salesforce.com team, but they often result in the same kind of hairball if not uh, implemented uh, wisely with a, a broader view on both applications, data, and APIs. And what you don't want to end up is with is this, with the same hairball that you know we've all grappled with over the last 10, 15 years in enterprise IT. That brings us to, well, who is SnapLogic and what are we doing about solving some of these new integration challenges? What is the integrator solution that we're proposing to this very real integrator's dilemma that many of you out there are probably dealing with in your organizations? SnapLogic is the company that was founded in 2006, actually, by Gaurav Dillon, who was, happens to also have founded and run Informatica for 12 years. He was the founder of that company in the early 90s had a tremendous success, took the company through an IPO, took a few years off in retirement, and was an early investor in SnapLogic. The 1.0 version of this company was focusing on building an open source product 
for mid-market kinds of use cases. So made some early investments, did some early innovations. In 2010, the company took a, a significant round of funding. Gaurav got involved to actually you know, run the company as CEO, and the decision was made to embark on building a completely new modern platform, and that's what we've gone to market with over the last 6 to 12 months, and that's what I want to take you through in today's brief overview. You can see we have a pretty strong CIO advisory board. We're venture-backed by Andreessen Horowitz and Ignition, and our headquarters are in San Mateo, California. Let me just spend a few minutes on kind of taking you through the, the components of the SnapLogic Elastic Integration Platform, and then I'll wrap up with a couple of customer stories and one in particular. What we're focusing on at SnapLogic is what we believe have been fairly siloed approaches to integration and bringing it together in a single platform. Data application and API integration really delivered through a modern approach, a modern platform. And you can see here the three pillars of data apps and APIs. We have a scale-out architecture, which I'll explain in a minute. And then we have what are pre-built connectors called SNAPs, hence the name SnapLogic, which allow you to very quickly snap in and snap out of different systems. And we also have an SDK to allow you to build your own SNAPs. So let's just walk through the architecture at a high level so you understand what runs where with SnapLogic. We followed some of the principles of software-defined architecture, where we have a control plane and we have a data plane. The control plane is on the left, which is running on AWS, multi-tenant, metadata-based service that you can, you know, HTML5-based interface, you can log in anywhere. That's where you do your design, your scheduling, your managing, your monitoring of what we call pipelines, which are data and or application process flows. And you're going to do your work in our control plane. The instructions are sent to the SnapPlex, which is the workhorse, which is running the actual pipelines, which is processing the data and ensuring you know, data moves seamlessly between sources, targets, in an orchestrated fashion. So we don't stream your data. We don't cache it on our servers. Actually, I shouldn't say we completely don't cache. In some use cases, for example, guaranteed delivery, we will cache the data until a message can be delivered, but that is something you can opt out of or set up to run in a certain configuration. It is secure, 100% standards-based, and elastic in that the SnapPlex can actually, it's, a, it's an execution grid that can scale out as you need more capacity and then collapse as needed. So we have the SnapPlex ability to run natively in the cloud. You can run it in our cloud. If you're doing, say, Workday, Twitter, Facebook, your data gravity is in the cloud. Of course, your integrations are going to run there too. You could run the SnapPlex on your own cloud infrastructure, or you could run it behind your firewall, closer to the business application, say it's SAP or Oracle. And we recently announced, and I'll talk about it in a moment, the ability for the SnapLex to run natively as a Yarn application within a Hadoop cluster. So just wanted to walk through a couple of use cases on each of these areas of application, data, and APIs for SnapLogic. So on the application side, we have over 160 snaps that allow you to really handle any sort of permutation, uh, pattern, or integration style, cloud to cloud, cloud to ground, ground to ground, and hybrid. And you can see some of the you know, primary ecosystems where we've seen constant sort of repeatability. We have a lot of customers running Workday, ServiceNow, and Salesforce. Those would sort of be the big three on the SaaS application side. And more often than not, they're still connecting to on-premises systems like SAP and Oracle eBusiness Suite. On the data integration side, you know, a key strength for SnapLogic, again, is its ability to do both application and data integration in a single platform. Here, we're, I mentioned uh, SnapReduce, which I'll talk about in a moment, for big data integration. We have pre-built connectors to Amazon Redshift and a series of the you know, MongoDB, Netiza, and other high-performance database management systems, as well as BI Snaps. We work quite well with uh, Tableau. We have a number of partners like Burst and Tidemark who are also bundling in SnapLogic into their offerings. So you can see that key strength for us is, again, to be able to handle very robust data-centric requirements as well as application integration. One of the reasons we can do that so well is because we natively speak JSON. So we don't have to translate SQL into JSON to communicate all of our pipelines run JSON, and that's the core strength of our modern architecture. And just finally, on the 
on the big data side, many of you in, in your organizations, you may be focused primarily on app integration with sort of a, you know, ESB message-based kind of pedigree. We're finding we often will work with you on the app integration use case, but then the analytics team, the data side, starts to discover that, hey, they can actually take advantage of the SnapLogic platform. And increasingly, that group is looking at big data types of technologies, Cloudera, Hortonworks, and others. And we've recently been certified on Cloudera and Hortonworks to run natively as a YARN application. So again, speaking to the strength of this ability to straddle this world of app and data integration. And then finally, on API management, this is an area you're going to see more and more from us in the coming months. We're focusing primarily on API delivery, making it easier for you to manage and monitor, throttle the API access, and really get your arms around what's happening in the world of APIs and helping you manage them, in, again, in that single platform. So just to wrap up on a sort of product overview of today's discussion, I want to just hit three key points that make SnapLogic uh, unique, we believe, and, and really provide value to you in your organization. One is the speed. We are, you know, cloud-based, natively built for the cloud, taking advantage of really the modern cloud infrastructure that is expected. So you can get up and running quickly, you know, web-based, easy-to-use design interface that I'll share one more screenshot with you before we move to the case study. The second is that we are designed for multi-point integration. So help you get out of that point-to-point -point potential hairball by delivering orchestration and broad set of connectors, as well as an SDK for building your own connectors. And then finally, the modern Elastic platform. So with our SnapPlex being able to scale out as needed, being able to run on the ground or in the cloud, these are real strengths, as well as the uh, modern standards, REST and JSON, that are native to the platform. So I think I've hit this a few times. You know, if you think of SnapLogic, you know, we're very much focusing on enterprise types of deployments data applications and APIs, and our distributed architecture does allow you to run in multiple locations. And that's actually a setup for a quick case study that I wanted to share with you before we uh, get into a question and answer session. So if you look at a few of our customers, companies like Netflix, Danon, Bloom & Brands, who is the parent company for restaurants like Outback Steakhouse, it's fairly common where we will get into an organization and, and help you solve for a specific set of use cases. Uh, it might be HR onboarding where you're you're moving to a you know, system like Workday, you need to connect to Active Directory, and then you need to have a real-time synchronization across multiple systems. It might be digital marketing. We're increasingly working with Tableau and Redshift and going in and helping you know, marketers manage all of their social channels. Or it might be just general cloudification where you're looking at rethinking your overall approach to integration. That's really been the case at iRobot, where they needed to increase the cadence and veracity of their distributed manufacturing data collection process, and they were very focused and continue to be very focused on operational intelligence. And as you can see from um, Jim Teal, who's the information architect at iRobot, with SnapLogic, we've been able to eliminate some of the rigidity and time-consuming tasks related to traditional integration patterns. Their initial use case is actually you know, integrating on-premise data only, but very much focused on iPaaS as the way forward for integration at iRobot. So iPaaS at iRobot. Geographically distributed manufacturing, so they have a team in China, a team in their headquarters in Boston. They wanted to eliminate FTP and VPN channels. So really early on, they had decided that iPaaS was going to be the kind of approach they needed to take. They had multiple SaaS apps and have multiple SaaS apps that they will be integrating over time with SnapLogic. So they also had on-premises systems. So they were running an Oracle data integration technology, had fairly familiar team who just understood some of the ETL concepts of ODI. And they did look at another iPaaS uh, platform before SnapLogic, but it was too centered on messaging it was too sort of EDI message-based and couldn't, wasn't going to be able to broaden and handle some of their data integration requirements, not just their app integration requirements. So just to, uh, you know, we asked why SnapLogic, and, you know, the answers we got back were, were really mostly to do with the architecture. 
this concept of having a control plane in Boston and then having these snaplexes, which is the data plane, running in, in, in multiple locations, true global deployment, the standards connectivity, and one key strength of our platform is this concept of schemaless integration, where they're able to have, instead of a you know strongly typed building the mappings in advance and then if something changes, going back in and having to remap, we have more of a loosely coupled approach where it's more dynamic. If there's change that happens, we're able to detect those changes and not have to uh, you, you to go back and rework everything that was built. So they were able to take it from 68 pipelines down to six, which was a huge productivity gain with SnapLogic. And then really the next steps here at iRobot are around more and more reuse, expanding the use cases into other areas, and then expanding the footprint into some of their SaaS and on-premises integration requirements. So hopefully that gives you an overview, a sense of you know, what we're setting out to do. It's a big vision of bringing these things together and delivering a single platform for enterprise organizations. So it's no small task that we're embarking on, no small journey. And we're excited about the momentum we've seen over the past six to eight months with our new platform. And you're going to hear much more about us in the coming months. So. With that, Vance, I think I'll uh, hand it over to you and we can uh, get your thoughts and get some questions on these topics. Darren, excellent session. Very provocative. Love the technology conversation as well as the use cases. Really right on target. And you're right. We have quite a number of questions across the gamut from business to architecture. So with your permission, let's go to those questions question comes in. Very interesting about how you handle data. Simply the question says, can you please detail how SnapLogic can work with structured and unstructured data? Sure. You know, in fact, we wrote a white paper and we'll have it here as available for everyone, which is why we believe buses don't fly in the cloud and some of our thoughts on ESBs. So we have a view on really the vision we believe for service-oriented architecture was and is a good vision, but we feel like the ESB is simply too heavy, kind of weighs it down in this next generation of social, mobile, analytics, and cloud. So what we decided early on when we built a new platform, really from scratch about three and a half years ago, was to focus first on not making it SQL dependent, really focusing on JSON and less so on SQL and XML. So we felt like XML has many complex constructs, such as namespaces, and these are just overkill and confusing for the average user. We also felt like some of the XML is heavier, it's heavier in general, and the new types of integrations need to go quicker. They're lighter weight, and they need to be able to you know, get information across these systems very, very quickly. So we focused really on our approach was going to be on JSON, the JavaScript object notification approach, which is very lightweight, flexible, and can handle structured and unstructured data. So when you run a pipeline with SnapLogic, you actually construct your pipeline from a series of snaps. And the snaps can both be the endpoints as well as the middle transformations and uh, deconstructing the flow of data across different systems. And so really the key strength for us is this investment and realization that JSON was going to be critical. It's the language of big data and it's, it's the language of the web. And, you know, that investment, we believe, is starting to pay off. People are recognizing that, you know, SOAP and XML-based technologies, let alone, you know, SQL-based rows and columns-based technologies, aren't really well-suited for sort of smack, if you will, social, mobile, analytics, cloud requirements. They're hitting the enterprise pretty hard right now. You know, that's a really interesting answer. In fact, just let me chime in with a quick moderator question here, Darren. I think most people in this audience that are in the architect side think of JSON as a mobile enablement technology, maybe not just a very horizontal cloud enablement technology. Can you talk a little bit about how your JSON-focused architecture is really opening up a lot of new cloud integration options? Our Chief Scientist Greg Benson wrote a great blog post called Technical Advantages of JSON-Centric iPaaS. And he talked about how documents are a better match to modern web services. He talked about documents resulting in a more succinct pipeline, so again, speaking to that sort of lighter, faster integration uh, requirement, how the document model allows our pipelines to be loosely coupled, which again gets to that sort of schemaless integration we talked about in the iRobot example. 
and how the document model allows for greater uh, reuse as well as being a superset of records. So it's not to say you're going to have JSON or SQL, but you can have JSON be the superset and then ultimately things can be rows and columns based below that. It's much easier to then go that way than it is to try to translate all of your SQL into JSON. That's just going to really slow you down. Really good discussion, really good discussion. Here's a topic here, Darren, which I'm sure is uh, something you get all the time, and that's about the, the speed and ease of use of SnapLogic. And the question simply says here, how truly code-free are SnapLogic pipelines, and can you please detail what out-of-the-box solutions SnapLogic provides? Sure. So I mentioned earlier that you know, we have over 160 SNAPs, which are pre-built connectors, today on what we call our SNAP store. You can go out and get started very quickly with ServiceNow and Tableau, Oracle, Workday, Splunk, etc. We also have a toolkit that allows you to build your own. So there is that pre-built nature of the snaps that we have today. But I will say you can do a lot of things programmatically with SnapLogic thanks to the underlying APIs of the platform. So you can actually throw away our user interface and build your own pipeline with code. We have a, a Java-based pipeline builder that our Snap Labs team has, has, has built, uh, and, it's, and some customers have specifically asked for a more programmatic approach. So that's something that, again, speaks to the underlying power and strength of the platform. Now, of course, we have a drag-and-drop, easy-to-use design environment for you know, assembling, uh, we call it snap and assemble, where you can, uh, if I had a demo here, you go to our website, you can see it. As you construct a pipeline, the components snap together, they actually make a snapping noise. Um, so it's very easy to build a workflow or an orchestration in the designer. But there's a lot of things you can also do programmatically thanks to the underlying power of the platform. Excellent, excellent. And speaking of kind of a cloud integration lifecycle, a related question comes in, and it says, once I build a pipeline in the SnapLogic design time, how do I launch or take that integration project live? We're actually, as we go deeper into enterprise deployments with our platform, those are the kinds of questions we are increasingly getting from customers. How do I move you know, from dev test through the different dev test prod cycle? How do I create versions on my pipeline, my pipelines and manage them? I can see the audit trail of how they've changed. So those are a number of things that we actually are building into the platform. Most of the work initially has been to to focus on on kind of the, the, the engine, the data flow, and the scale-out nature of the SnapLex, being able to really run across multiple uh, locations and have it centrally managed and monitored from our uh, our control plane, if you will. But it's interesting. Those are the, those are the kinds of things. We're running on six-week sprints. So we're, our in, pace of innovation is pretty amazing here because, you know, all of our customers are running on the same you know, version of the software. It's a multi-tenant you know, metadata-driven uh, architecture. So we're able to add more and more to this, you know, underlying platform on a six-week cycle. So um, we'd love to kind of dive into that specific requirement. There's a lot we can do now around moving between dev, test, and prod. We have an assets-based model where everything's in a central project, and then each project has assets as well as multiple orgs. So you can have multiple orgs or instances of the SnapLogic integration cloud that you can manage as an administrator. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, I think it's an exciting time for innovation in the integration space. I would agree. In fact, uh, another uh, question or comment actually kind of highlights that shifting trend. And it kind of points to your case study, actually. And it simply says, I found the case study from iRobot actually very interesting. It seems like they're doing end-to-end -end business tasks and not simply moving data from on-premise to a SaaS. Is that the bigger trend SnapLogic sees? Uh, yeah. In fact, most of the pilots or projects or initial use cases we go in and help customers address are around application integration, connecting multiple you know applications together in, in, in a near real time or real time fashion. You know, an iRobot was really all about trying to improve operational efficiency uh, with a China-based manufacturing organization uh, and a whole team over there 
with what's happening at headquarters and how they're actually taking products to market globally. So for them, that distributed architecture and ability to connect to on-prem systems but not have to go and install software in all these locations, it was a huge strength. This ability to sort of remotely deploy but centrally manage, I think a key characteristic of a true, you know, what we call software-defined architecture versus sort of a kind of a cloud-washed runtime, but, you know, all the design, implementation, and heavy lifting has to be done on-prem. Well, and so just to kind of parse that into maybe a checklist, uh, Darren, if folks do need that baseline level of data integration or data sharing from a, an on-premise database to a cloud uh, application like Salesforce or something, but they also want the future capabilities of this sort of end-to-end -end transactionality, are there two or three features that folks should look for in an iPaaS that would give them the best of both? Yeah, it's, uh, I actually uh, been thinking a lot about this um, and wrote a blog post just recently, uh, earlier in June, on what we think are sort of six six ingredients, things to look for in a modern iPaaS solution. The first is, I think it should be, to my previous point, you know, fully functional cloud-based service. It shouldn't be sort of crippled in the cloud, but really needs the the heavy on-prem for anything you know anything advanced. We believe in that software-defined architecture model of a control plane and the data plane, which supports that distributed uh, type of deployment. Uh, the second, you know, we think that you should be look for, looking for a single platform for, for big data apps and API integration to, to really, you know, get at that, that root challenge many organizations face with this, what we call the integrator's dilemma, where you've got different teams, different tools, different technologies and skill sets. Um, we think in the cloud, we were actually talking to a uh, Gartner analyst who said, as sure as death and taxes, you know, app and data integration are going to come together in the cloud. Um, we think elastic scale would be the third. Um, modern standards we talked a lot about today, so dig into REST and JSON and how those vendors support uh, those two in particular. Uh, are they native or are they uh, kind of layering it on top with, you know, through translation? And broad connectivity is always a must for any integration technology. Uh, and then lastly, we think there's something to this concept of a citizen integrator. It's not going to be only the, the heavy specialists, you know, like many on the call today, who will be doing integration going forward. There is this sort of new, you know, newer class of people who want to do some, some things quickly. Um, they want to connect a few different uh, systems and move on. So be able to think about who is going to be uh, using the integration technology and is there any possibility for uh, the citizen integrators to actually take advantage of it versus going with some point to point tool. Really, really interesting conversation, Darren. I see we're just about out of time, but I can't let you go without asking probably one of the most popular questions we get here at uh, CloudCon, which is uh, given it is a cloud based offering that you've got, how can our attendees uh, either evaluate or take a trial? Sure. So you can go to snaplogic.com, and we have uh, a video site, which is at video.snaplogic.com, with a number of tutorials, recorded webinars, and other assets. But because we're a platform, we've been a little bit reluctant to put everything out there as, you know, as a completely self-service trial. You can come to our site and sign up for, you know, a demonstration or for a contact us. And then what we would do is we would provision you a trial. Um, making sure that you, you're kind of the right fit for, for the use cases and the technology. Um, we are focusing today on, on larger size organizations, so we tend to be a, you know, a good fit for companies over $100 million in revenue. Most of our focus so far has been in North America, although we, we do have some customers running uh, in Europe and certainly some interest from some distributors uh, in Asia. So we would want to kind of walk you through and make sure you get up and running successfully, narrow down the use case, and make sure we're the right fit. We pride ourselves in the, the ease of use, and uh, a lot of focus has been uh, put into the design experience. We're actually coming out with a mobile monitoring app, so you'll be able to go to the App Store and, and you know get our uh, the SnapLogic app. But we want to make sure you're successful. So we would rather, you know, at this point, talk to you about your, your requirements and then you know get you set up right and, and, and ensure you're seeing some value from uh, what it is we do. Darren Cunningham, Vice President of SnapLogic, thanks very much for a great session and uh, really interesting use cases of how cloud integration is really maturing for uh, all sorts of extended enterprise uh, uh, applications, and especially for taking so many questions. Really enjoyed the session. Thanks a lot.
Thank you, Vance. It's always, uh, always a pleasure talking to you. And as we like to do here at CloudCon, we're going to leave a slide up here with many of the links that Darren mentioned to some of the other resources and case studies and videos that are there at SnapLogic. And a reminder that Darren and his team brought some terrific downloadable material for you that's available right now in this room. Thanks again, everyone.